YouTube, what is up? Welcome back. I'm glad you see you returned. I am Shunrin, a.k.a. the friggin' Iron Man, and I am here to bring you another build spotlight. Today, we are going to be experimenting with a new build I've done a couple of times, as well as a new recording setup. As many of you may know from my earlier videos, if you've watched them from the beginning or have gone back and seen them, I was using a pretty cruddy freeware version, which was really, really ticking me off and having a lot of hard times with it. Uh, so today I'm trying a new, a new version I've gotten my hands on of recording software. It's much better, it's a lot easier on the computer, it's a lot easier to use, it's a lot more awesome. It doesn't have any editing though, so I'm gonna try really hard not to foobar things up and have to go back and do anything that I have to edit for and post. So we'll see how that goes. So if I end this video, the video's over, and that's it. So <laughs> we'll have to see what happens, we'll make the best of it of what we can. And so we'll, you know, bear with me. And without further ado, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video. Today we're going... What is that? Oh, that's a thing. Oh, that's annoying. That's a plugin I think, that my server admin installed. And um, I unfortunately think that it might be linked to the same hotkey that editing the, ending the recording would be. So we're going to have to put up with it. <laughs> so today we're going to do what I've been experimenting around with. is called the, what I'm going to coin the phrase for. I'm calling it my gas box. So a lot of people need gas tears a lot. And the problem with that is gas are really hard to find, really hard to farm. And they take a lot of work. Even if you are in late game, you know, and you don't really have a lot of gas tiers, they're still kind of annoying. Even if you're indestructible, even if you're wearing Q-suit, they're a little difficult to farm because of the fact that they are distance-oriented. So unless you have really good ranged abilities, you're not going to be able to farm them that easily. Um, and also you got to pray that they are over land in the nether instead of lava so because if you know you shoot them down over a lava ocean then you're kind of effed right so this is going to be more, more of a mid-game build i'm going to say because a lot of the time i've been doing early game builds a lot of the steam boilers and things i've done in earlier videos have been about early game builds and doing early game builds is all fine and dandy uh, but this is more of a mid-game not super terrible um i'll show you how to do it so we're going to be filling up a soul shard, and for those of you who don't know, this is going to be combining a lot of different mods, some a little more obscure than others. Some a little, uh, little less known, little, little well known, that kind of thing. I'm running a 1.5.2 now at this point, in case anybody didn't know. And to start out, we're going to get a soul shard. The soul shard mod is a really awesome mod that lets you capture the essences of monsters and also of animals and a lot of it, a lot of real NPCs in the world. And uh, in the current version we're running with 1.5.2, this is how you get a soul shard. You're going to take end stone, which is mined out of the end. Even if you don't kill the ender dragon, if you pop in there and make a little house really quick and get a few end stone, all you really need is a couple. And then get four neither rack in the middle like this, and you make a diamond pattern. And you put the glowstone right in the center. And then what you're going to do is you got to get a diamond. And you're going to right click in the center with the diamond on the glowstone and pow! There's your soul shard. The neither rack and the glowstone gets consumed. You actually end up with more endstone than you had before, so you can hang on to that. And then you get a soul shard, like so. Okay? And then we're going to fill this with essences of gas. Anybody that might be familiar with the soul shard mod is going to be familiar with the fact that every gas you kill has to go into this soul shard. And every time you kill, well, any gas, any monster that you've killed is going to fill up the soul shard, and it will tell you how many kills you've got on the shard. Okay, uh, there's a couple ways to speed it up though, because the maximum tier for this soul shard is 1,025. Not quite over 9,000, not enough to make that horrible pun, or that horrible meme, but still, it's a good amount of kills. Who wants to kill 1,024 ghasts? Not me. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a piece of obsidian. And I'm not sure, I'll have to be completely honest with you guys, I'm not 100% sure if there still has the, uh, the soul stealer enchant. I'm not sure how to get that at this point. Um, there, in an older version of 1.4.7, there was the Stol Soul Stealer enchant. Stol Soul Soul Stealer enchant. Sorry, 
Soul Stealer Enchant. And you could easily get four or five kills at a time with one shot on your enchant, on your weapon with that. And that would allow you to fill up, for every one mob you would kill, you would get four or five kills in the soul shard at the same time, right? Um, and that enchant isn't really available so much anymore, um, at least not as far as I know for the straight, straight enchanting. If anybody knows how to do that 1.5.2 with the soul shard mod, leave a comment below. I'd really be interested to find out. But there's another way, there's another mod called Dark Craft, which is a really awesome mod in its own right, and it adds force logs and force ingots and stuff like that. And you get yourself a force rod, like so, and you can use force sticks, which is made out of force... Um, force logs, or you can just do regular ones. And what you're going to do is you'll find these in the world. That's a type of world gen. Which is going to... I'm not finding the ore for some reason. You get these. These are force gems out of it. But anyway, you get a couple of these when you break it. There's got to be an ore here. Force ore... No? Okay. Anyway, you get these these force gems, and these that's the meat of everything. And you combine one of those with two ingots, iron ingots, or two gold, or two silver, or two copper, two bronze, pretty much any metal and a force will get you a couple of them. Two for iron, three for gold, three for refined iron, two for bronze... My favorite is using silver, because silver has so few uses in the game. So that's my favorite way of getting it. And then you're going to get... You'll get the two force ores. Or, I'm sorry, you'll get two force ingots. Right? And then you can combine that. You can use one force ingot on a crafting table. Let's grab a crafting table. And you can break that into your nuggets, just like any just like any ore. And then we'll give a, we'll get a stick... like so, and that's going to get you your force rod, okay? And then if you take your force rod, pow, you right-click the obsidian with it, and you get your little altar. And this altar is going to be the basis of all of your dark craft work. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to get a book. Not a book, a book. And we need to get the... This altar is used with a special dark craft tome. And you just throw it on the ground, you right-click it, and you're going to come up with your upgraded tome, and you put that on your altar. Your upgraded tome starts out at Tier 1. If you hold down Shift, you can see how many experience points or force points this book has. Who knew the books are now relying on experience just like anybody else? I didn't. But the more force points you get, the more stuff you can add in there. And I'm just going to do a quick brief overview of this. If we get charcoal, and we get a force tool, I'm going to go with an axe, like so. Whoops. And we right-click, you throw the axe in the center, you throw the charcoal up there. You're going to have to feed it force gems, those with the world gen I just showed you. Force gem. You feed it a few force gems, and that's going to give it liquid force on the side over here. See liquid force, a thousand. I think each one gives you a thousand. Yeah, there's two thousand, three, four, five. Five thousand holds ten thousand. Then you need to give it some form of build craft power. Let's go with the clockwork engine, just because that's easy to show people. That's the automatic wind-up engine. And this is made by doing um, any sort of wood planks at the top, and a glass and a piston, just like any other regular engine. A copper gear which is copper around a stone gear, which is stone around a wood gear, which is your four sticks, and then a clock, which is just four gold and a redstone. And the cool thing about this is that it gives out build craft power, and it's manually windable, so you just right-click it a bunch. You can just hold down the right-click button. Wind it until it turns red, and then stop. And then it will power this thing, and you'll see the power on the side just start to fill up. 189, 214, 234, etc. and so forth. And as soon as that power peaks up high enough, you will be able to enchant this with this charcoal. You're going to put heat on this axe. So you click the go button, you'll get some crazy power up sounds, and then your axe turns Super Saiyan and you have a heat axe. 
And if you hold your mouse or you hold shift over here, you'll see 30 force points out of 66 needed for the next tier. And then it'll give it tier two. Once tier two unlocks, you get a third enchant slot, because right now you can see we have these two open. So I could have put two items on there. And then you get a third item. And each tier unlocks another item. Or another 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 few items to enchant with. Charcoal's just the first one you start with, and then another few uh, enchant slots. Okay? And Really, that's just a quick, brief overview of how to do this. Each time you enchant a tool with an item for the first time, not the tool, the item. So now that we've got, we now that we've gotten experience out of enchanting with charcoal, we will not get experience with enchanting out of charcoal again. You need to use a different item to enchant with to get more experience. Now, the cool thing about this is if we go find a uh, go find a tree to chop down right here. This is fine. The heat enchant as you chop automatically burns the thing into into charcoal. You see that it didn't drop wood. It dropped me a piece of charcoal right here, see? So what you do is, that's a nice way to get charcoal without having to cook it, right? And then the awesome thing is, as you're chopping, as you're chopping wood down, this is going to take durability damage, okay? And then the quickest and easiest way to get more experience, if you get stuck, you don't know what items to use quick, Dark, Darkcraft has a Minecraft forum page that explains everything. Uh, but if you get stuck, when you use these items, for shard, yeah, there we go. When you use these items, as you use your force tools up, and they break, they will break and drop these force shards. You can also find these force shards in, like, world gen chests as loot, okay? And every time you use these force shards, you can throw them in the crafting bench, I'm sorry, in your little force altar here, uh, and they will give you liquid force as well, but they'll also give you experience, and look, we're at 30 points next tier 66 let's drop one in there and we got a little bit of for liquid force we got a thousand just like a regular force gem but look we also got 10 points of experience now next is 56 okay now the next is 46 so if you just keep those in there you'll just level up really quick what i like to do is grab a stack of these and throw them in there and then i will grab some liquid ducts or some build craft piping and pump out force into like a tank for example Let's grab a tank and a lever and a wrench and we can do that and we can do that and we can do that drop that and look and it's just going to pump those out of there and it's going to keep using those force shards and look at how fast your experience is going up so you just drop the stack in there drop a tank down to store the excess force energy because you know if you keep a tank filled with this you can just pump this back into the table to keep using the force gem or to keep using the liquid force it's not like you're wasting it you can just store it and you can pump it back into the altar so you can come around like this if you wanted to man this grass makes things hard to click on there we go so you could even do a little loopy like this and you can throw this lever down right there and now that we've used up all this Oh, look, we're tier 4 already. Sweet. Now we've used up all this force liquid, we can just turn this off, and turn this on, and we'll pump it right back in there. So we didn't waste any of it. It's all stored. We can still use it for enchanting, but we got the experience points out of it. Okay. Now you're not going to have a stack of force gems right off, obviously, to store with, but at the very least... You didn't waste anything, and if you find them in the world gen, all the better. Once you do get to tier 4, by the way, that is, that's really awesome that it, that it stopped us at tier 4 like that, because that's the tier you have to get to for our build. So what you're going to do now is you can take a force sword, okay, and you can throw a force sword in here. And what we're going to do is we are going to grab a force jar, I think it's called a force jar, jar? No. Oh, there it is force flask maybe I think it's called yeah flask and it's made just one force nugget which is four pieces of glass around it gets you eight of them so they're a really good deal and you're gonna grab force flask there we go and you're gonna grab a few of those and then what you do is you fly around oh wait before you fly around we need to enchant our rod here oh the other cool thing to get force wood by the way guys is you're going to take a sapling and you place it down in the world and you right click it with the force rod you made and now it's a force a force tree sapling it turns gold 
And then once it grows, I think bone meal works on these guys. Let's see if bone meal works on these guys. No. Bone meal does not work on these guys. So once that grows, you're going to get force wood. And then what you do is you'll end up with force logs. There it is. And then your force logs you can use to make force sticks. Like so. Get you eight force sticks. And then if you get your ingot. And you can make a wand. You can make another force rod. But you're going to make it out of that. And it's going to get you a fully charged one. right? Then you're going to drop it in your table. And you're going to enchant it first. And you're going to enchant it with the capture. And I'm not quite remembering offhand what item you use for capture. Let me just look that up really quick. Got everything right here next to me. Uh, dum dum dum. Upgrade. Upgrade a tome. Configuration list of item upgrades. There we go. Heat, speed, luck, and grinding rainbow. I think it's a glass bottle. I'm pretty sure it's a glass bottle. Yep, glass bottle. So you have to get to tier 3 on the tome first, and then you make yourself a glass bottle. Right? Which is a super easy recipe. It's just you get three glass bottles out of three glass shaped in the bowl. And then you can upgrade this wand with the glass bottle. Yes? No? Hmm. List of valid upgrades. Sword, pickaxe, shovel, axe, bow. I've got a list here, guys. I'm looking over the list. I've only done this once, actually, so I'm trying to remember off the top of my head here. Force rod. Yeah, force rod holding. Glass bottle. Oh, it's incorrect. It's tier 2, not tier 3 for the glove for the holding. Wow. Force rod. Yeah. Force rods may only have one type of upgrade on them per rod. Heat speed holding. Huh. Well, you know what? We may not have enough power. No, we have plenty of power in there right now. Hello! Doesn't like it. Glass bottle. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. It's one of these force flasks, isn't it? Yeah, okay. We had that issue before. I tried to do the glass bottle. I think the uh, forum is a little bit out of date. See, there we go. Rod of holding. That's what we're looking for. It's one of these these flasks I showed you. Forget the glass bottle, guys. My bad. We had the same issue on the server. I was trying to do it the wrong way, and I was like, it says the glass bottle in the forum, but that's a little bit out of date. So you take your your rod of holding, and you go looking for an entity, quote unquote. And an entity is just going to be any any living creature, really, except for a creeper. It doesn't work for some reason. So you can take pigs, you can take cows, you can take whatever you want to. And as long as you have some of these force flasks in your inventory, you go up, you right click, pow. It takes the essence of bottled pig. Doesn't that sound delicious? Bottled essence of pig. It's like drinking a big old jar of bacon fat. Oh, God, that's got to be delicious. Imagine that, guys. Just Imagine just downing a straight bottle of bacon fat. I mean, come on. How amazing. Luckily for us, we're not going to be drinking this crap. Why doesn't that stack with that one? That's weird. We're not going to be drinking the bacon fat. We're just going to be cooking it. So, you don't need as many as I'm getting. You only need, like... Actually, you do need. You need five of them for what we're going to do. Because that's the best way to go. So, we're going to take our four sword. We're going to throw it back in there. Let's grab a furnace. Let's grab an iron furnace because it's a little bit faster. 
I probably shouldn't have broken that, oh well. And let's just throw a piece of coal in there. It's going to be a waste of coal, but it's creative mode, so whatever, guys. And then you cook the bottled pig, or the bottled sheep, or the bottled cow, or whatever you bottled. Whatever poor soul you decided to bottle, you cook it right in here. Oh, fun, meteor. And you're going to get these, the soul wafers. So you're going to cook up five of these, because once you hit tier four on that uh, enchant table, then you're going to be using five upgrade slots. So why not have five soul wafers? The soul wafers are what's going to get us our soul stealer enchant. And the entertaining thing about this is that um, this whole thing is really just a different way of enchanting items. It only enchants its own items. It doesn't enchant real world items as far as I know. I guess I could be wrong on that. But you throw them in the crafting table. We don't have enough power to do it, to do five of these, so let's let's get rid of this. Actually, I'm going. I'm just going to grab a redstone energy cell just for just for cheapness sake, because it's a lot faster. It outputs a lot more power. I cheat, so you guys don't have to. That's right. So let's throw these all on the side here. Now we got enough power. So now we'll enchant this. We'll get the awesome power of music. I know I'm an amazing singer. That's going to take it a little bit because it's five of these things. And while that's chanting, let's grab ourselves a... Neither portal. I'm going to grab our obsidian. Excellent. So now we got Neither Portal, and this sounds like it's done. Yep, Soul Stealer 5. Fantastic. And we're going to put the shard. The soul Shard needs to be on your hotbar, it just has to be there. Because if it's not on your hotbar, if it's just sitting in your inventory, it's not considered active. So watch. I'm actually going to grab another Soul Shard just for demonstration purposes. The way these work, with the Soul Shard mod, is anything in your inventory is considered inactive. Anything on your hotbar is considered active. So if I go over here and I murder a pig, like so, it's going to say, look, pig, killed six. Up here, this says it's empty. It doesn't have any kills on it because it was in the inventory. So you have six kills. So because it's Soul Stealer 5, it adds five extra kills. So we're getting six kills off one hit. So you can fill up a pig shard pretty easily that way, okay? Uh -huh. So you want to make sure that it's on your hotbar only when you're ready to kill the monster you want to kill, because if you accidentally kill something else that's on there, you've just bound that soul shard and wasted it to a different monster, okay? So I'm going to keep these on the hotbar really quick. And we're going to go through the neither here. Welcome to your doom! Junka, 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 junka. Okay. So we get our we get the customary little bit of lag when you come to the either for the first time as it renders everything. I said customary little bit of lag. Thank you. Okay. Wow, that's a lot more lag than I was expecting. So I don't hear any creepers guy or I don't hear any ghasts guys. So I don't really want to sit around here and wait for a gas to spawn. So I'm actually just going to spawn one through cheaty mode. So pretend you're running around for a long time, you come across the gas. The only drawback to this method is, yes, you're going to get a lot more kills out of it at a time, but it's in a melee sword, right? So you're not going to be able to, obviously, run up and hit a gas every time, so you're going to have to be really careful with your gas hunting. It's hard to melee a gas. You need ranged abilities in some fashion. I've actually found a really good method, I believe. And by found a method, I mean thought of an idea. Let's grab a gravity gun. If you have a gravity gun mod installed, you can pull things to you, I believe. Well, I know you can pull... Oh, I hear a gas. There he is. There's two of them. Let's see if we can pull the gas to us with this gravity gun. If you find a little ledge to stand on, let's say you're standing on this ledge. Let's see if we can... Come here, gas. Come here, gas. Yes, it pulls them to you! Ah, ha, ha, eat it! Okay. So, yeah, grab a gravity gun. All you do is you hold right-click. You point, there's a certain range to it, so you have to be within a certain distance 
so pick your spot wisely when you go to fight your ghast. But if you have a gravity gun, at least you know that the ghast can be pulled to you. It's a little dangerous. You have to have really good armor, obviously. You can't just come in here and do this naked, but you can pull them to you. Watch. Just hold right click. Come on, ghast. Get a little closer, maybe. There we go. Look at him. Pulls him right to you. Then you just rape him. Nice. And that's what I was talking about. That's the whole purpose of this video. You see how I killed him over lava and he just died and instantly in a flaming fiery death. And all of his loot got burned to nothingness. That's why we're doing this gas box, guys. That's exactly why. So, you see now we have tier 6 gas shard. Killed 6. The reason why it's only killed 6 instead of 12 because I killed 2 gas is because the first one attunes the shard. It doesn't count towards kills as far as I can tell. So the first one attunes the shard. The second one is what starts giving you kills, and from then on, you get six for this method. So let's go back through our frame here, and the reason why I'm going back instead of finishing the shard is because I... Oh, that didn't work. Let's kill another one. I loaded, just through creative mode, you might have seen a minute ago, I loaded a tier 5 killed 1024 monster shard. You can't do that. You can't make one of those. You have to cheat it in through cheaty cheatiness if you're going to do that. I heard another ghast. I'll just spawn another one. But for the sake of this demonstration, this video, guys, I'm just going to load in a shard and load in a ghast. And that should... Yep, there we go. Ghast tier 5. Okay. The gravity gun, if you have the mod installed, by the way, is going to be a pretty... It's not a horrible recipe, but it's, again, this is more mid-game stuff, just like this whole build is mid-game. So you're going to need one diamond, one obsidian, two iron, a glowstone, and four ender pearls. Which can be made with a minium stone. Oh, they can be made with UU matter too. Look at that. Minium stone and four iron will get you one of these inner pearls. Minium stone, of course, is the monster drop of minium shards, equivalent exchange three with a uh, inert, inert stone, which is made as such. One gold, four iron, four stone, and you can make yourself inner pearls. So that's not bad either. Or if you went to the end to get the end stone anyway, you might have killed a few ender, endermen and have an inner pearl. So that's how you get your shard, guys. There is a force bow, but I tried to enchant it with the soul seal, or it didn't work, so... Sad face on that, but hey, what can you do? So we're done with these. We're done with this. We're done with all this setup. Now let's make the actual gas box. This is how we're going to be farming our gas tiers, guys. And I recommend doing this a long way from your base. Oh my god, gas are loud. They make such crazy screaming sounds. My fiance does the absolute craziest gas sound impersonations, impressions I've ever heard in my life. To the point, it's done so well that whenever I hear that impersonation, I start looking around in game. I'm like, where's the gas? Oh my god. And I have a brief panic before I realize, oh, oh, it's just my dick fiance over there being a complete jerk. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a gas box. Because they're so loud, you want to build them a long way from your base and use ender chests probably to transport that or even into or even a different dimension guys if you want to as long as you've got the uh chunk loader going on you should be fine i like to build out of force bricks that's become one of my new favorites because as of this recording 1.5.2 is not updated with red power yet so i uh don't have access to basalt which is my all-time favorite building material but force bricks are a pretty good alternative they're made using the force nuggets. So you take a force brick. You can die just a default force brick to get force bricks. Okay. Uh, the default force bricks come out yellow. And you just take a force nugget surrounded by stone bricks. Which are made out of four stone. Which are cooked out of cobblestone. And I, I like to have a 9x9 nine nine inside area. So we're going to do an 11x11 11 11 box. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And we're going to go 11 out. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay? And the reason for this box being this size is because uh, you want something not so big that they can fly around too much inside the box, but you don't want it so small that the, uh, sp the spawner ends up spawning them outside of the box. You want them to be contained inside so you can auto automatically kill them. So those are the two things that you want to come and take into account when you're building this. And then all you need from here, after you get the box built, is going to be a method of killing them. 
some some automated method of killing. And I'm going to go with Tesla coils because they're awesome. And that's again part of this whole mid-game build. A lot of recipes are using gas tiers nowadays. There's a lot of gas tiers used in Thomcraft, uh, all kinds of things. So that's why we're doing this. Um, for Tesla coils, you can use any automated method of killing you want to. I just found that, that for me, this is my favorite way of doing it. So we're gonna go up. We're gonna go up ten. So we're gonna go because a Tesla coil can reach four out in any direction. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the reason we're going out ten is because it can reach out four, right? So it'll be able to reach down four, two, three, four, and it'll be able to reach up four, one, two, three, four. So it sits in the center. The tenth height is the ceiling. Okay, makes sense. Are you with me so far? Did I lose anybody? I'm using hardened glass just because it looks nifty. We don't have access to Zycraft either at this point, otherwise I'd be using glass viewers. But it's just used with crushed obsidian or pulverized obsidian and a lead in an induction smelter to get it. But it's only I'm only using it because it looks nifty. Um, you could use regular glass if you wanted to. Gas won't fire at you through it because it's not considered line of sight. So you don't have to worry about them blowing it up. But hardened glass is fairly blast resistant, so and it looks nifty. So that's what I like to go with. So this is going to be our gas box. Now let's talk about some math really quick while I build this. Uh, Tesla coils are an automated way of killing things. Anybody familiar with industrial craft may be, indu may be familiar with the Tesla coils. And they blast through a lot of power. Now, they can hold an internal charge of up to 5,000. They can release all of it all at once on anything nearby that's that's you know they can shoot at players and NPCs alike so really your best method of using a Tesla coil is to have a lot of power at your disposal so I'm gonna be using a solar panel for this demonstration because that's I don't do a lot of industrial craft play I just I hate relying on it because it's it's such a it's a, it's an amazing mod and it's so tech heavy it's delicious but doing industrial craft plays over and over and over and over again I've gotten kind of sick of it so I don't use it for a lot of stuff anymore but I do still use the solar panels because the solar panel add-on mods out there are really nice there's the HV LV and MV solar panels everyone's familiar with but there's also the advanced solar panels now which we have on our server which I like a lot better so I don't do a lot of industrial craft but when I do I go solar power but you could also do this build with uh, geothermal generators the problem is to get 5,000 energy units, we're going to be doing four Tesla coils, so you need, you're going to need 20,000 energy available to you at all times. Every time the uh, Tesla coils go off, they're going to be using that much energy. So for 20,000 energy units every time that goes off, you're going to be needing to be able to generate that. So that's going to be something on the order of like 20... I would probably go with 20-odd geothermal generators just to be safe if I was going to go geothermal. But you need to be able to generate that kind of power. And of course, if you have GregTech installed, which we do as well, uh, they, have a, they, they have an amazing machine called an interdimensional energy storage unit, which stores buildcraft, or not buildcraft, sorry, it stores industrial craft power inside of it, and it's ender chest typed in the, uh, in the idea of what it does. It moves energy between dimensions. So you have two of them, just like if you'd have two ender chests, and you can place one down at your base and charge it, and then you can take the other one to a different dimension like the neither and have power. The problem is they're super crazy expensive and super crazy complicated to make, and only people that are insane make them to use them. And I make that hilarious noise because I make them all the time. Because they're just so useful. Only for certain builds, though. And this is one of them. Because, like I said, I don't build this near my base. I build this in, like, a different dimension. And then chunk load it. Which is the best way to go, really, in my opinion. Because I don't like listening to gas scream. Because they are loud. I'm all for the screams of the dying. But not loud gas. So you take your Tesla coils. You've made four of them. You place them in the centers around the edges of the box, like so. Tesla coils are not that expensive to make either. You're just going to need an MV transformer, five redstone, two refined iron, and an electric nook circuit. The circuit is made out of... I go, wow, you can use four circuits. I never knew that. Oh, you get two circuits out of that. Wow! Not Well, that makes sense because you're using at least two metal in it. But the more traditional fashion is refined iron and six copper cabling. 
and your redstone. Your refined iron is cooking iron, like so. And then your copper cabling is the rubber, any kind of rubber apparently. Our server is enabled so you can use the mine factory reloaded rubber as well as regular industrial craft rubber. They're interchangeable in our server, but that might not be the case in yours. And the MV transformer, of course, is just a machine block, which is eight refined iron and two gold insulated, two times gold insulated cabling, which apparently you can just surround a gold ingot and get gold cable. Or you can just mix a wire together with two rubber. So those aren't very expensive. And then we're going to get some glass fiber cable and we're going to run them up the sides here. Pop out that first one, or don't build it if you don't want to waste the resources, which is probably a better way to go. And I didn't mean to leave that center open like that, so I'm going to load, block those in really quick, guys. running these cables up the sides because solar panel <laughs> we could put the solar panel underground but it wouldn't do us a lot of good guys I mean I guess you could put it in there but then your gas wouldn't be dying you'd be wondering what was going on and then you blame me and I'd be like what I don't know <laughs> I'm not there to look at your build. I don't know what you did. Go watch my video. And you'll be like, I did watch your video. I'll be like, I don't know. Don't blame me. I'm just Iron Man. There we go. Gas box. Okay. So we'll bring these into the middle here. Now Tesla coils can only stand medium voltage. So you have to transform it if you're going to use higher than that, which we are. So we're going to get an MV transformer, which I showed you already because it's used in the making of the Tesla coils, right? And I'm going to go grab an ultimate hybrid solar panel for simplicity's sake, like so. Wow, that scared the piss out of me. That was the most epically timed meteor ever. That I placed that solar panel and that meteor happened. I thought I blew up these Tesla coils. I thought I blew up life. That was so loud and scary. Holy crap. I hope my server admin gets a hilarious kick out of that. That was insane. Wow, my entire Minecraft life flashed before my eyes right there, guys. I'm not going to lie. Whew, ultimate hybrid solar panel. Generates 512 VUT, which is why we're transforming it. Uh, you could use just a regular hybrid, which is 128, which is medium voltage, and put that directly in there, but that might not be enough to sustain four of these guys. Actually, you know, it should be 128 EUT, 20 ticks, 1002. Yeah, that would be enough, actually. You know what? Let's do that. Because it's a lot cheaper. So you can put this directly there without the transformer. Because it, it's medium voltage already. 128 EUT, generating 64 right now. I'm not really sure why, but that's alright. This should be more than enough. Um, the recipe for this guy is not force bricks. You're going to take... You can break down an ultimate hybrid into eight of them. But you can take a lapis lazuli block, which is nine lapis. Two carbon fiber plates, which is compressing a mesh. Which is two raw fibers, which is four coal dust. And two iridium plates, which if you have Greg Tech installed, is going to be made by using an implosion compressor with eight industrial TNT, which is nuts. Or you can use a rolling machine with the iridium plates, four advanced alloys, and a diamond dust. This is a different iridium plate, if you look at this. Depending on what mod you have installed, this might not be iridium plates. This might be just a straight iridium ingots. Because if you don't have Greg Tech installed, this recipe is going to look just like this, except for it's going to be the ingots right here instead of the plates. Greg Tech is weird, I don't know. Um, but yeah, rolling machine. Um, and then you take 
two advanced circuits, which is a regular circuit that I already showed you with four redstone, two lapis, and two glowstone around it. And then a scenarium, which is uh, six UU matter and three glowstone. You only need six UU matter for this build, which is nice. Except for the iridium, unless you mine out the iridium. You can find them in world gen now every now and again, so save those as you find them. And then that's all around an advanced solar, which is made by upgrading a regular solar panel with three reinforced glass, which is just two advanced alloys and seven glass. An advanced alloy is compressing a mixed metal ingot, which with our current setup, again, with Greg Tech, I think it's a Greg Tech thing. I'm not 100% sure, but you can take refined iron plate, bronze plate, and tin plate to get an ingot, which is made by plate bending machine with each of those. If you don't have it, though, the other recipe that's available to you is going to be not listed because we don't have it. Uh, the old recipe, if it still exists, is you take three refined iron across the top of the grid, three bronze across the middle, and three tin across the bottom gets you two mixed ingots. If that's the old recipe, I'm not sure if, why we don't have it available. Anyway, you get those refined glass, you get two of the advanced alloys around here, an advanced machine block, which is two more advanced alloys, machine block, and two of those uh, um, carbon plates. Two advanced circuits around the solar panel gets you the advanced one to upgrade. And the solar panel itself is three coal dust, three glass, two circuits, and a generator, which is the machine block, a furnace, and a battery, or an iron furnace, three refined iron and a battery, iron furnace being eight refined iron. So it's a lot of crafting, but to get the ultimate one that I just put down there, it's eight of these around a circuit. Around an advanced circuit, just like that. Or you can make it directly out of the advanced solar panel, but instead of having a scenario, you need scenarium alloys, which is an insane amount of iridium. Don't do that. It's not worth it. It's basically the same in terms of amount of resources spent just to use eight of these and upgrade them. I've, I've calculated it, guys. Don't worry. Trust me on that. It's, it's, it's only slightly more expensive by the cost of the electronic circuit, the advanced electronic circuit in the center to put all eight of these around. Eight of these themselves is equivalent to one, so don't worry. Now what we're going to do, the reason I came these down here with these cables and broke the middle glass piece and put them in like this is because these need a redstone signal to activate. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using another mod that I like to call, or that I like to use. It's become one of my favorite new mods called Mine Factory Reloaded. Most people out there are already familiar with it. It's an amazing mod. It does a lot of nice stuff. These um, Tesla coils need redstone in order to activate. And we don't have, as I mentioned, as of this recording, we don't have red power installed. Sad face. Everybody out there that's watching this right now that loves red power, that doesn't have it, hit me up with a sad face. Bah. Let's take a moment of silence for our fallen comrade. Comrade in arms, we are waiting for Elaram. Needs to hurry up. We are all sad face. So redneck cabling is a really nice alternative. It does a lot of nifty stuff. And if you haven't seen a build spotlight for uh, Mine Factory Reloaded yet, you should definitely go check one out and look it up. So I'm not really going to get too in-depth into what all this cabling can do, but it is, trust me when I say this, amazing cabling. Okay? You can do a lot with this cabling. Starting with the fact that it can be configured so that uh, anybody that's familiar with Red Power might know that you have your, two, your 16 colors. This cabling has its 16 colors all built into every cable. So to see the white around here and the white square around the inner side here, you can right-click that square to change it between the 16 colors. And you can right-click on this side, and you can see that it'll change underneath. See the change the square down here, too? So you can change these between the different colors. All 16 are available. And if you... But it's all 16 colors in the same cable. So if you activate, you can activate each color independently along the same line. So I could take this cable I just ran all the way around this gas box, and I could turn on white, and blue would not be turned on, for example, in the same cable. And I could turn on white and blue in the same cable, and it wouldn't turn on green. See what I'm going with this? The reason why I'm setting these to orange is because I'm not going to be using orange. I'm going to be using white. That's just the default starting color. And as a conscientious builder, I don't use what I don't need, so... I'm actually going to break this. We're going to break this down to here. And I'm going to do this. Oh, wait, I need that broken out. And if you right-click with the wrench, you can see it says in the middle chat window, it says, force cable connection only, or cable only mode. 
The reason why is because this cable will automatically try to connect to everything around it. Because it's not coded to know if it's an acceptable redstone receiver or not. Because it doesn't know if it interacts with every mod specifically or not. So it'll try to connect to everything when you first place it down. So see how it connects right there like that? It thinks the force brick is connectable. It's not. So that's just wasted redstone signal. So you can click it. That's force connection. Now it's connecting with all sides, even the dirt below. Or you right-click it again, it goes to cable only, which means it'll convey the signal, but it won't connect anything. So that's what we want to do, right? Actually, I think I need that open. So let's put a door in this thing, because we need to be, have access to the inner side somewhere. So I'm going to put a door in right here. And let's get some uh, stairs here going on. Whoop. Where's my black force brick stairs? There we are. Black force brick stairs. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. And I'm going to go out and grab a lever. thought I already had a lever, but oh well. No big deal. Put a lever up top. And we will grab an iron door. Because gas can't blow it up. That way you, you can access the inside here without having to really subject yourself to gas too much. Gas are way too big to get through this door, so you can leave it open if you wanted to, really. Um, but we're going to go into the center here. And we're going to place down a cage. Soul cage. This is what's going to house our gas shard. This is what actually spawns the gas. You can't just do a rain dance. You can't throw the thing on the ground. You can't walk up like this and go like this. And go, hi ya da dum hi ya da dum hi ya da dum And do a little dance and, and have rain happen. And instead of rain, you have gas. That's not how it works. You make a soul cage. The soul cage is eight iron bars in a square on the grid. Iron bars, you get six iron bars. Like so, it gives you 16 of them. So you can get two cages out of this one recipe if you want to. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in the very center. One, two, three, four, five. Pow. Just like that. Those meteors are freaking me out, man. Thanks, server admin. Abraham, Mega Mage. At your service. So I'm actually going to do this underground, because that's how I like to do things. So all of you who love to see me digging a lot, you're going to love this part. Normally I would hide this a lot better, but I'm trying to do this expediently instead of spending forever filling in dirt, because I know people hate to watch that. But I'm neurotic and insane, and it's Minecraft, so you've got to kind of expect something of that nature. Now these are going to try to connect with the force bricks. I don't need this anymore. These, when you place down the force brick, it'll try to connect with it underneath. So what I like to do is I like to get down here before I even put the force bricks away, and I tell these... Cable only mode. That way they don't connect to the force bricks. Just right click with the wrench. Cable only mode is good. There we go. Now we can fill this all back in. Excellent. And then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get in here and do some wrenching because we don't want these to be that has to be cable mode connection mode because of the fact that it needs to connect to the cage up here you see how the white band is touching the cage underneath there so you wrench all the middle ones and if you if you wrench it and then break what it's connecting to that side is still configured for that color so you put it back and look it's still orange right there so no, no need to worry about that it'll remember so now what we're going to do is we're going to come out here do I keep getting rid of my lever, guys? Wow. Nerd fan. Everybody rage at me. So if I get in here, and I put this lever, you can place the lever directly against the cable. And we're going to switch him to uh, standard connection mode. And you can see he's on the white side, and you can configure this to be whatever side you want it to be. I'm going to come in here and say this is orange side, because orange is what we've not been using. Right? So this redstone signal is going to go up to the Tesla coils only and into the gas box only. Now, if I switch this, the reason why we have a tier 5 gas shard is because this will respond to redstone signal. So if you turn the redstone signal on, stuff will not spawn. But if you turn it on up here, this uh, Tesla coils will be armed to start damaging things. So we want the Tesla coils to be off when the gas box is off. But the gas box is off with signal. So we're going to invert the signal right here. And the best way to do that is to pop that out like that. We're going to grab a structure pipe and stick it there. 
Structure pipe is made by putting a piece of gravel into a cobblestone transport pipe. Cobblestone transport pipe, of course, is just two cobblestone around a glass, get you eight. And we are going to get an autarchic gate, like that. The autarchic gate is made in an assembly table. You need lasers in an assembly table. If you don't know how to do that, go look up a mod. I'm not going to get into that right now. But the assembly table is really nice for making autarchic gates. And you get one gate, one chipset, uh, one red, one ender pulsating chipset, and one red iron chipset. The pulsating chipset is an ender pearl and, an, and a redstone. Gets you two of them. The iron chipset is a redstone and iron. The gate is made out of a redstone chipset, which is just one redstone in the assembly table. So, that's how you get that. And we're going to come in here and we're going to tell this that when the signal is off, to put out a signal. Okay? So right now it's not, right now it's not putting out a signal because the signal's off. So right now, when I connect these, it will both arm this and the gas will be spawning once I put the shard in there. So when we flip this, look at that. So because the signal is now on, because I turned the lever on, the gas will stop spawning because the redstone signal, which will turn this off because it's not getting a signal anymore, which will not be arming those. That's how we're going to invert the signal without red power. Just wrench those back on there. So those connect. So now everything is off. It's fantastic. The last thing we need to do, guys, one last thing before this gas box is almost ready to go. Last thing we're going to do is make some conveyor belts. These are also from Mine Factory Reloaded, and they are also amazing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, let's say, this is good. Let's pop this floor out a little bit. Oh, you know what? Let's not use this side because that's where the cable's running. Let's use this end over here. Fantastic. And we're going to place these along down here. So you just drop off this ledge, right, like this. And then what you do is you come over here and you pop this last brick out like so. Make this look nice and neat. And what we're going to do is we're going to get an obsidian transport pipe. Obsidian transport pipe, gold transport pipe, like so. Let's pop it to daytime really quick here. And then this side is going to be coming to whatever your whatever sorting system you want to put in right here is where this is going to come to. So if you want, uh, let's say, if you want to use barrels, grab an insertion pipe maybe. The obsidian pipe is just made just like the cobblestone is with the um, obsidian around the glass. The gold is gold around the glass. The insertion transport pipe is you make the cobblestone pipes you made earlier for the uh, structure, and you put a redstone on it. I think that's a standard part of buildcraft now. But let's say that you want to use barrels. Right? So you do this. Or you could use this. If this is extra dimensional, what you're going to do is you're going to pipe these into an ender chest and sort them out of your base. Because as I said, gas are loud. So for, for this video, I'm not going to do that. Just because of the fact that I don't have a base. Because this is a test world. But if this was a real world, you would pipe them into an ender chest from the chunk loaded area. And then pipe them out of your chest into your barrels at your base. But let's just pretend these are your barrels at your base. And so what's going to happen is that's all going to come down to that obsidian pipe in there. And what we're going to use is there's two ways you could do this. Number one way is you can make this entire floor obsidian pipes to catch all the monster drops. Because as anybody might know, an obsidian pipe, all it does is it catches stuff that's dropped on it. Anything in the world that just drops next to it, it's going to catch that thing. So you go like this, and you go like, whoop. And you throw something at it, it catches it, and shoots it on down the line. So basically, this is what's going to catch our gas tears and our gunpowder that the gas drop. And it's going to come in that pipe. But how are we going to get down to this pipe, you ask? Well, you could make this entire floor obsidian pipes like that, like along the entire floor, and they would just drop into the city pipes. You have to use a lot of iron pipes to structure things, because iron pipes only go one direction. But what I'm going to do is, again, since we have the redneck cabling from Mine Factory Reloaded, I'm going to use conveyor belts. Conveyor belts are fun. They are one of my new favorite things. I'm going to use the black conveyor belt, because why not? Conveyor belts are made out of three rubber, 
You'll probably want to use the rubber bars from Minecraft or Mine Factory Reloaded, but again, our server is set up so that you can use it rubber interchangeably from IC2. But three rubber bars, one iron ingot, and two redstone is all you need. Get you 16 of those bad boys. And then you can combine those with ceramic dye of any color to get whatever color of conveyor belt you want to. Black in this case, which is clay with the ink sack. But you can actually make any color of ceramic dye with any color of dye that you want. So you could have the, the um, you could have the, there you go, see? Yellow one, yellow ceramic dye, light blue ceramic dye, and those will make those colors of conveyor belts. Okay, conveyor belts do the same thing that obsidian pipes do, but they also transport stuff. So if you do this like this, and you throw something onto it, it'll catch that, and it will conveyor belt it. Right? Yeah. Awesome, right? Yeah, it's awesome. You know it's awesome. You love it. And as soon as it hits the end, it just drops it off wherever the conveyor belt ends. So basically, we're just going to make this entire floor into conveyor belts. That's all we're going to do. Not as expensive as piping, my opinion at least. Yeah. Previous versions of my gas box, I didn't have access to Mine Factory Reloaded, so I had to use the piping floor, but this is much better. And then what you do is you're going to come in here. You can change these directions by wrenching them like that. Now that's going to go up over. That's a way to, m to move the conveyor belts up ramps if you wanted to. Right-click it again. Now we're going to go to the side. And now it's pointing that way. You can use wrenches on those. And the thing is, is that if we come out here, uh, just fit, uh, uh. Yeah, conveyor belts will move anything, items or monsters, so they're really good for mob traps. Okay? Those four right around the gas box are not moving because the gas box is getting a redstone signal, which is being triggered by the, which is also triggering the conveyor belts, which is why that's not moving in there. But as soon as we turn that redstone signal off, gas will spawn, Tesla coils will arm, the conveyor belts will start, and drops will happen. Here we go, you guys. Ready? Here's the, oh, I should probably put the gem in the thing. Started hyping it up and I failed. There we go. Just right click it. Trust me, it's in there. You can't see it anymore for some reason, and that's because I'm in creative mode. It didn't consume the gem, but it's in there. Trust me. Here we go, you guys. You ready? Three, two, one. Bam! The, bam. That. Bam. Hello. Wow. Let's try it again. Yes. Shard. There we go. <laughs> Guess you gotta be a little closer than... Wow, I'm gonna get a little ways away, guys. Holy crap. That is loud. You know what? Let me turn my client down a little bit here. Oh, so much better. Wow! I had to turn them down to 10%. Minecraft is now at 10% volume. But yeah, that's nuts. That's the gas box. Look down here, we already have 35 tiers, 39 tiers, 44 tiers, 30 gunpowder, 33 gunpowder. Look how fast we're getting these drops, guys. It's just coming right out of there. Why'd it stop? Hello? There it goes. Sometimes it takes a minute. You can see the tears coming along the floor in there. Let me flip this off really quick. Yeah, that, that, that panel up here is chugging, I think. See through the stupid hats. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Chugging hard. Trying to fill those up. So even that one hybrid panel is not enough. So you might even want the ultimate hybrid. Just because it's easier. See if we can get these gas killed really quick here. Yeah, there we go. Let's go inside here really quick. Yeah, look, there's a tear coming down the conveyor belt. This gunpowder only got stuck because I turned this on, which turned off those conveyors as before. Otherwise, if they'd fallen anywhere else, see, they just get hit. They just hit the conveyor belt and they come down. So yeah, that's the gas box, guys. Infinite renewable, sustainable gas tears. Usable for any upgrade items you might have. Usable for Thomcraft research. Usable for anything that you might want to use it for. We already got a stack. 
A little over a stack of both. Not quite a stack of gunpowder. A little over a stack of tears. It's infinite. It's infinite. Let's uh, let's replace it with an ultimate hybrid panel. Let's go with what we had before. Again, remember, if you use the ultimate hybrid panel, it's high voltage, so you have to put the uh, you have to put the transformer on there. There we go. And that's not going to consume its power at all, guaranteed. It won't chug at all with that thing. There, now look how fast it's killing him. So even with the hybrid panel, we were getting a stack every few sec or every few minutes. But now look at how many tears we got coming down the line. Because it's keeping those charged better. So they're not even have time to scream anymore. Just dying. Die! Die, you giant scary sons of... Pieces of... Motherless... Crap. Son of a... Anyway. Gas are scary, guys. This is why we do this. Feel no pity for these ghasts. For they have wrecked havoc in their time. And now it is our time. It is our time to shine. It is our time to win. It is our time to conquer. Feel no pity, for they have deserved this fate. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this build spotlight, guys. As always, I am Shunrin, a.k.a. the friggin' Iron Man. And here's me posing right next to my beautiful cast box. Take a screenshot, set it as your desktop. If you do, hit me up in the, in the comments below with a screenshotted desktop. Your Iron Man ass. Yes, I love it. Have a fantastic day, guys. I hope you enjoyed the gas box. Have a good one.